If we want to talk about the language of light, then we really do need to start with how we see light. And our sight is our perception of light. We tend to, in lighting, think much more in terms of things that we uh, see as functional acuity measurements and how the amount of light uh, can affect our performance when we're doing activities. However, in recent times, of course, two new things have become much more prevalent. And I think this is showing how we're moving away from what I would call the industrial era of lighting uh, towards a more humanized era of lighting, where we talk about biological effects of light and also more the psychological, emotional effects of light that have an effect on our well-being. Um, really, sunsets and sunrises, it's almost impossible to tell, actually, which one is which. And this is happens to be an image, actually, of a sunrise, which I manipulated to make it feel like a sunset. So this shows how um, the way we process the information um, and the way we feel and the, what we know from it is coming really from the information in the image here. I think probably the first person to really talk about this in a big way and to create a, a theory, if you like, of how this works was Richard Kelly, of course. He created this idea of uh, these three layers of light that really are needed in order to create um, a lighting that is visually arresting and comfortable for people in a psychological sense. So all of these um, things led us to feel like, okay, we're, we're missing something in terms of our approach to lighting. And we finally came across another thing which was very interesting was um, the biophilic design theory. And this talks a lot about our innate need for nature and that um, there are certain aspects of how we sense nature that are very important for our health and well-being. So this is an experiment which we did in terms of uh, then going dynamically changing an object with lighting. So we were able to actually change people's perception of this object, which is just a simple circular diffuser by the way we lit it. And here we really wanted to try, try and see how far we could get into the sort of tactility and the texture of something and really broaden the experience into other sensorial aspects. So this is something that uh, we think is very powerful uh, for people because it really gives them a, a sensation of when is the point in time, which you can very easily lose if you're in a windowless environment, of course. Um, so this is an example of uh, the Nature Connect system where we actually exploited this idea of the change of the time of day just by regulating the white point and the way in which the light is coming into the room. And then finally, the sensation of energy. So this is more to do with natural analogs, and this is coming from the biophilic design theory. We did an experiment with Q quite a few years ago where we were looking at how a room can change under different lighting conditions and creating different kinds of scenes uh, that gave a different impression of the mood and atmosphere. The question really is how do we actually design with this? Um, so this is all very well, you know, these are things, these are principles that people understand, but then how do we really apply those in reality? Um, well, of course we did recently, um, we created a product called Nature Connect. This is a sort of an early, um, in artist impression of what we were thinking. We also thought about how to think about these various ideas in a more sort of layer, what we would call a layer model or a spatial model in terms of how things work outdoors. So when we put all of these elements together, uh, we ended up with Nature Connect. Um, so here we've really managed to balance all the competing uh, needs of people, uh, not just human-centric lighting, but also the psychological effect of light as at the same time.